SQL is an acronym for the structured query language. It comes in handy while working with relational databases. While MySQL is a relational database management system for storing, retrieving, modifying, and administering databases. Hello everyone, this is Pracheta from Edureka, and today we are going to talk about the differences between SQL and MySQL. But before getting started, if you like our videos, please do not forget to subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Also, if you're looking for an online certification course on SQL, please check out the link given in the description below. So without any further delay, let's move on to today's agenda to understand what all topics will be covered today. We will begin the session with a brief introduction to databases, then RDBMS, which is Relational Database Management, then what is SQL, why we should use SQL, what is MySQL, and why we should use the same. And finally, we'll move on to the topic of the day, which is SQL versus MySQL. So let's start with databases. Databases are organized collection of data for easy access and management. It enables us to store any form of data in vast quantities, like you organize in tables, rows, and columns. The main purpose of the database is operation and storage and managing data. Few examples of databases are MySQL, Oracle, MongoDB, SQL Server, etc. Now we'll look into the introduction to RDBMS. So RDBMS or Relational Database Management is a more complex database management system that lets you organize, maintain, retrieve, and register tabular databases. It is one of the most commonly used tools by data analysts and database managers. And in RDBMS, data is always stored in tables and remain accessible. Now we will discuss what is SQL. So SQL, or Structured Query Language, is the standard language for operating, managing, and accessing databases. It is owned and hosted by Microsoft. It can be used to create programs that make changes to databases, also to construct and alter database schemas. So here's a few basic queries of SQL, like select, which helps you to extract data from the database, create database, which can help you to make new databases, then delete, which can help you delete the data from the data set, alter table, which helps you to modify a pre-existing table, insert into, which helps you to insert new data into a pre-existing database, create table, which helps you to create new table within the database, update, which helps you to update the data in a database, from, which helps you to retrieve data from specific columns of a table, and where, which helps you to filter rec based on conditions. Now, if you have to talk about why we should use SQL, the reason can be many. Firstly, it helps you to learn data mining in an efficient way. Then SQL programmers are highly in demand in the job market. The data stored in SQL is dynamic and SQL is effective in data manipulation at any time. SQL can combine two or more sources to extract the required data set. And it can also help you to manage servers or create your own server. So now let's discuss what is MySQL. So MySQL was created back in 1995 by MySQL AB, but now it is owned by Oracle and sold by Oracle as well. It is an open source relational database management which can perform certain functions in a database using SQL commands. C and C++ are the programming languages that are used to create MySQL and it practically runs on all major operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Unix-based computers. Now, why we should use MySQL? First would be it offers extensive support for all types of application development. Plugin libraries are available in MySQL for embedding database functionality into any application. It also includes connectors and drivers. It provides application developers with all they need to construct data-driven information systems as well. And it even provides comprehensive support for every application development need. Now let's come to our topic for today, that is SQL versus MySQL. So as the first topic of comparison, we have the definition. So what is the definition of SQL? SQL is the standard language for operating, managing, and accessing databases. Now let's see what is the definition of MySQL. So MySQL is a relational database management system for storing, retrieving, modifying, and administering databases. 
So next point is history. So for SQL, SQL was born in 1970 as a programming language known as SQL. It was developed by Microsoft Corporation, but now it is also known as SQL. While MySQL claims to be the first open source relational database in the early 1990s, it was developed by MySQL AB and is currently owned by Oracle Corporation. Now looking into the complexities to use SQL efficiently, you must first learn and then grasp the language to start working with SQL. While for MySQL, you can easily access it by downloading and installing the same. Now coming to the usage, SQL is a programming language, so it can be used by querying and operating. While MySQL allows for data manipulation, storage, modification and deletion in a tabular format. Now the syntax or format. So SQL is a programming language as we all know now. The syntax and format are fixed. It's declarative and easy to use. It starts with the clause and ends with a semicolon. While MySQL is a software and it is not a programming language, hence it does not have any commands or any format. Now the updates. Since SQL is a programming language, it is fixed and command remains unchanged and we can't update it. While MySQL has its latest updates and versions for enhanced performance. Now for supporting language, SQL was designed for Windows, but it also works on Linux, Mac OS in its most recent versions. While MySQL is a cross-platform compatible running on Linux, Mac OS and Windows as well. Now coming to the data security, SQL servers are secured as no third party or outsiders are allowed to manipulate data. While in MySQL, it is susceptible to more security threats due to its open source nature. It gives access to data manipulation and modification to unauthorized users as well during the runtime. So that's about it for today's session. We'll meet again in our next video. And if you have any doubts or queries from this session, please let us know in the comments below. Until then, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!